Today is a very special day. A long-awaited day, the day I finally get to take out a DR650 for an extended test ride. This is a bike that I've wanted to get my hands on and test out for a long time. And the gracious, amazing folks at South Pacific Auto Sales in Albany, Oregon, were kind enough or foolish enough to entrust me with this brand new 2024 DR650. It's completely stock. This is a new bike you can actually go buy from them, probably by the time I get done with this video. South Pacific Auto Sales is a full-service power sports dealer. South Pacific Power Sports is the power sports side. And I feel like a lot of people don't know about it, but they're a Suzuki dealer, so you can buy new Suzukis. Hoping to borrow that V-Strom 800 from them next. They have CF Moto. They have a ton of quads, side-by-side, stuff like that. So pop over to South Pacific. Go in, check out the power sports section, and tell them Dork sent you. I've got about 100 miles leeway to take this bike out and test it. So I'm going to do this video as kind of a first ride on and off-road, and then I think I want to do like a separate review video when I'm done with that. So today is just going to be the ride and then look for the follow-up review video. Make sure you're subscribed. So as I ride up the road here before we get to the gravel section, I want to talk a little bit about my road experience on the way out here. I didn't bother to record while I was riding on the road because the wind noise is not great, particularly when I don't have a windscreen. So let's talk about what it feels like to ride this on the road, and then we'll get to some gravel and uh, see how she does off-road in a few different scenarios, maybe even some trails. Reminder, stock tires, so the stock death wings, sorry, trail wings that come on the Suzuki is the same as the DRZ. I'm not a fan of these tires. If you buy this bike or a bike like it and you plan on taking it off-road, I would take them off immediately. We're going to make do today and try not to get into any deep mud, which is their real Achilles heel. So first things you notice when you sit on it, suspension's bouncy. Obviously, pretty cushy. Uh, it's easy to get your feet down. I am balls of both feet here, and I can actually, if I get creative, almost get both heels down at the same time. This is a carbureted bike, so when you start it up, you have to let it warm up, which means choke, but the choke is here on the handlebars. Unlike my DRZ where it was down underneath and I could never hardly find it while I was sitting on the bike. Feels very dual sporty underneath you. It's pretty wide for a dual sport seat, but it's still a dirt bike inspired style seat. It feels very nimble and lightweight. It's obviously heavier than the DRZ. You can feel the difference, but it doesn't feel like a heavy bike. It feels like a big dirt bike. And not in the way that we always say like, oh, this Africa Twin handles like a big dirt bike. No, this literally, like I spent all day yesterday on the CRF 250F, and this feels like a bigger version of that. Now, one of the biggest considerations with the DR650 is the age of the design. This bike first came out when I was 11 years old. I was in sixth grade and it's been relatively unchanged for the last 30 plus years and it won't be changed unless they do a full overhaul revamp like they did like Kawasaki did with the KLR 650 because emissions requirements you know all that so I guess the number one thing to know going into this bike is that it is in no way modern and I think if you're shopping for one you probably know that but analog dial no gear indicator no ABS no nothing it doesn't even have fuel injection it's a carburetor it's as old school as they come it is a modern classic and not in the way that people use that term to mean like this car is so good it's definitely going to be a classic no this is literally a classic motorcycle like a 30-year-old motorcycle that you could buy brand new right now. It's sort of like when they were making brand new Volkswagen Bugs, the 60s version in Mexico forever. You could still buy a brand new one even though it was the old technology. That's what this is like. Now that's not a downside necessarily depending on who you are. Carbs can be finicky. Obviously they don't like elevation adjustments. They're not great when they're cold. You gotta let them warm up. But they're also dead simple, reliable, and easier to fix and easier to modify uh, without doing you know remapping and stuff like that you just put a new jet in the carb so it's a very simple machine a very good machine to kind of learn on highway wise on the way out here what I noticed immediately is how tall the gears are so I was doing 65 and I didn't even feel the need to put it in fifth you've only got five gears I was doing it 65 in fourth 60 65 and then it wasn't until I decided to see what it would feel like to ride it on the freeway and I got up over 70 that I felt like I really needed to be in fifth gear which is very different than my DRZ was I have a lot of experience on a DRZ and obviously they're kind of similar so you're gonna get that comparison because people are always asking me about it it doesn't have like a lot of snappy power to it the DRZ was very like not twitchy that's not the word I'm looking for but like there was a lot of power right here off the snap right torquey maybe although that does it, it was more like horsepowery versus this feels very torquey very tractory the power delivery is super smooth and very easy i think this is a bike that a new rider could handle pretty well because uh, the power doesn't come on it's not going to surprise you it's pretty low to the ground it's not super heavy and it can go a lot of places so i was pleasantly surprised 
with highway speeds on the way out here up to 70 it's pretty smooth now it's a thumper you're gonna get some vibration obviously but it doesn't turn into that whole really really bad crappy unbearable vibration until you get closer to 80 miles an hour which means you can cruise on the freeway and have power to accelerate out of stuff if you need to uh, without it killing you and obviously there are things you can do and that's the other thing I need to make sure I say about this bike is this bike is over 30 years old and that means there's 30 years of aftermarket parts and expertise out there people kind of view this bike in the DR community that this is sort of a, a starting point a new one or a stock one is a starting point kind of the way like you would buy and I'm into the forerunner people right now so you'll you'll pardon the metaphor uh, really it's a simile you could buy the TRD Pro with all the bells and whistles right or you can get the base model SR5 and put whatever you want on it make it the rig that you want I've gotten a lot of comments already just saying I was testing this from people being like yeah it's good in stock form but you don't really know what it's like until you start modding it yourself you know that you do airbox mod reject the carbon stuff so so we're evaluating it as it is in stock form but just know that this bike has a lot of potential to be customized and built out into whatever you want uh, in a lot of different ways because of all the people that have invested in it over the years and they're very invested in it there's a ton you wouldn't believe what you can get for this bike and as an, an aftermarket almost unlike anything i've ever seen in fact it may be unlike anything i've ever seen there's just so much because it's been around longer even the drz doesn't have as much because it's 10 years newer believe it or not also on the highway it doesn't have that washing machine juddery world war one biplane feeling that the klr does the klr always feels just like very like it's just it's gonna fly itself apart this is a lot smoother until you get up to a super high rpm until you're trying to go 75 plus i was surprised by that basically in terms of an all-around bike that does everything it's so far it's been exactly what i what i thought it would be and you know people always ask the question if you can only have one bike what would it be and they often say this one even though today is really the first time i've ever ridden one and i have 27 miles on it this is the only bike i know of that'll do everything i want to do kind of well including trail riding like i like to come out and ride trails and so like that kind of thing like difficult roads and stuff even like washouts and kind of rocky stuff i've done some of that sand on bigger adventure bikes i would not get out and do any serious trail riding like i did yesterday on a bike like that i would do it on this it wouldn't be awesome right like that's the problem with the jack of all trades is it's not going to be as good as at any one of them but this is this seems to me like a, a kind of unique all-around choice if what you want is a dual sport that can do highway speeds comfortably enough and go long distances comfortably enough so we're here at the gravel we're going to start the off pavement section of today's test ride we're going to ride up the hill i know this camera whoop squishes everything down but that's high it's probably i don't know maybe even at least 500 to 1,000 feet. We've gained about 2,000 feet in elevation from the Valley Four where we started. Um, but one thing I'm noticing about this bike is it's not it's not quick, like it's not zippy snappy throttle. But you can ride it fast if you want to. It holds gears for a very long time. These tall gears, and it's so kind of torquey and tractor. It just pulls the whole way. I can't believe how tall these gears are. It might be the tallest geared bike I've ever ridden. Uh, you know, part of that is there's only five, so it's got to cover more ground, but they're very tall and close together yeah like what gear is this yeah this is first and i'm going 20. it's definitely stuff that i would be in third gear on other bikes yeah so we're what are we doing here 40 40 up this kind of not the best gravel road i've ever been on i don't take my truck this fast up it oh yeah and you know i would respring this if it was my bike obviously it's not designed for someone that weighs as much as i do but it does fine, or it has so far, at least on that kind of chunky stuff. And the thing I like about this bike is it's really easy to maneuver around, particularly on uneven ground and stuff like this. So uh, I don't worry about getting my feet down because it's very easy and that matters, particularly to a newer rider, which I think this bike would actually be really good for. God, I love it out here. <laughs> cool spot. And like so close to my house. Okay, came up the hill standing up. Try to go down sitting down. Kind of gorgeous up here. I don't know. Fancy. Not the world's most expensive or advanced suspension. It's not even modern suspension. This thing is a tractor, not a sports car. And it really is. Like, slow and steady wins the race. I rode with Dennis in Death Valley. He had one of these. And he was just he was just carrying him up and over anything. And then when it got kind of rough or whatever, he would just waddle his way through. It was no big deal. This thing, it's easy to handle. Easy to put where you want it to be. Not super heavy very smooth 
and it eats the little bumps up like nothing. The brakes are a little, they're not as strong as I'd like them to be. I don't think they're as bad as the KLR, but it's just heavier. It's like the KLR and this are very similar except for the obvious differences, which is, you know, this is lighter so it feels faster and quicker because better power to weight ratio. And, uh, you know, they both have not the greatest brakes, single caliper on the front, but this is a little better just because it's not stopping as much weight. Uh, but the KLR, like I said, is going to be a little more stable for your highway riding. So if you're on the fence, this might be the better one if you're going to do more than 50% off-road or you want to do harder off-road. I will say this, we're always on the lookout for the, oh, that tree still hasn't fallen, for the BDR killer, for the bike that can do it all. And I think this is a great candidate just because it's got enough to get you places on the highway. You know, you're not going to enjoy it. It's nothing you're going to look forward to, but it's not torturous either. And then you're going to be very comfortable on it off-road. <sighs> Dual sports are just so fun. Uh, another, another highway thing I forgot to mention is you definitely notice there's no windscreen. Like, it, it takes more effort to hold yourself. Oh, that's weird. Um, kind of scary. Hold yourself forward on it, right? Because the wind is hitting your chest. You're fighting that a little, so it's more fatiguing. So if you're going to spend a bunch of time on the highway, a small windscreen, which people do, or even a fairing deflector like I had on my 450L might be something worth considering. Now, this is the portion of the video where the haters have to agree that I actually took it off-road because this is not a road, it's a trail. So, haha. -ha. I'm not going to go do anything super heinous with this stock bike that isn't mine on the stock tires, but I do think it's worth hitting a couple of these easier trails just to get a feel for it. Let the games begin. Wow, this thing is a total tractor. Oh my god, that's funny. Whoa, yeah, she, she'll jump out if you let her. Okay, first gear. Yeah, this is all first gear. I'm gonna do this whole trail in first gear. It's very tall, so you're gonna have to clutch it a lot. It's not too twitchy though, down low, which is nice. And it's got a lot of immediate torque if you want it. Slid the rear, no problem. And my boots and this bike dirty, sorry. Sorry, Stanley. He's the one that has to clean it up when I take it back. Sorry, Stan. I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, this mud is not good on these tires. Take it easy. Because I will, they will ball up and I'll lose my ability to steer. And this is, yeah, I'm sliding down the side of the hill. I can totally feel it. Totally feel it. Oh man, this thing with proper tires would be a riot. I'm not, I'm not fighting the weight of it at all. You don't even notice, yes, it's heavier than the DRZ. And the DRZ had better suspension. I mean, I would, I would wager it definitely felt better. But I don't feel like I'm super high off the ground, super tippy. It's not super top heavy. It's just easy to ride. Like that's my that's my TLDR for this video. It's easy to ride no matter what you do with it. And I like that a lot. Oh, this, this is second gear. Okay, I'll try standing in second. Oh, it's too, too muddy. It's been raining for a week, so you know. Not bad. Honestly, the second higher gear will keep me from spinning the tire as much. Ooh, sliding sideways. <laughs> oh, these tires suck. They're terrible. They're not for this. They're gravel tires. They're 90-10, 90 street, I would say. 10 off-road. Because there's just not a lot of distance between the knobs. Yeah. I know I'm spinning back there. Oh, I'm so sorry, Stan. I'm so sorry, Stan. I feel bad now. Yeah, okay. No, that was straight sideways motion. Ooh. Yeah. It sucks that you can't get like a great test of a bike's true capability when you're limited by tires, which is I, I always say, when you get a new bike that's an off-road bike and you want to ride it not on the road, get new tires, just do it. Just do it, factor it into the cost. In fact, when I bought my DRZ, I just had them put them on. Yeah, see that? It just like becomes one solid surface and you have nay traction. Okay, I wonder if I'm gonna, I'm gonna go downhill here. Yeah, second is not gonna give me, it's giving me zero engine braking. So it's not really designed to be a trail bike, right? It's, it's a long distance bike, but you could trail it. You just gotta keep it in first and use the clutch a lot or keep it in second and know you're not gonna get any engine braking. Ooh. Ooh, hey, it wasn't bad. Came across that puddle too late. Was able to get enough torque to get the front lightened if not lifted and I didn't really feel it. So that's good. I like, you know, my 300L can't really do that unless you're in the exact right gear. You don't have the power to kind of pop up over stuff unexpectedly, but this does. It's got plenty of torque. 
<laughs> oh god, I love dual sports. I love dual sports. They're so fun. <laughs> They're so fun. Uh, oh sh Ooh. Well, easy to recover. That rear definitely was like, how about if I just go a different direction than you're going? And I was like, you should probably come back, and it did. So it's a it's a great kind of sitting down button bike for sure. And you know, when you need to, you can stand up and do more complicated stuff like that. But definitely good for the old putteroo. And for my last trick today, we're gonna ride this thing to the top of a mountain and uh, collect our thoughts on our time here on the DR650. You can see I'm almost at 50 miles, which means I have to turn around if I'm gonna keep this thing under 100 miles. I will say this, this is a great bike to learn to ride on, I feel like, but if you learn to ride on it, you will be ruined for any other transmission. It has the most unique gear ratios of any bike that I can remember at least spending this much time on. And that includes like the Grom that I had that had four gears. Uh, it's just weird. It's like you're simultaneously always in the right gear and also in the wrong gear. Like you can always get a little torque and get going, uh, especially with a little clutch work, no matter what gear you're in, but it's always like, okay, well, I wish it was a little lower. Or I wish it was a little higher than this. So I think it's fun. And as long as you're cool, it's just like giving it fistfuls of throttle and knowing you're gonna have to work the clutch a little. It's fun but it's definitely an interesting transmission um, which is good I think for all the stuff that this bike has to do and the line it has to straddle you kind of need those wide tall gear ratios sort of my overall final thought or at least a giant hypothesis at this point after this much riding on it is this bike to me feels like what a dual sport is like the purest distillation of the concept of dual sport, not diluted by fancy electronics or features, by extra technology, by nanny aids and helpers and ride modes, and even ABS, it doesn't have any of that. This is the purest distillation of the concept of dual sport, dual sport motorcycle, and dual sport riding. And that makes a lot of sense because it's also one of the first dual sports and one of the ones that really launched the whole dual sport and adventure industry right the dr350 came before it it is a real cult following and not like in the metaphorical sense like people are very devoted to this motorcycle and it's not hard to see why because it does everything it's fun it's cheap it's easy to work on it's fun to throw around it's very confidence inspiring people you were wondering when i was going to say that i said it because you can get your feet down so easily it makes me want to take it places that i wouldn't think about taking other bikes and trying things just to see because Worst case scenario, I either put my foot down and waddle out, or I'm lifting up a 350 pound bike. It's not the end of the world. It's, it's good at everything. It's a real jack of all trades. It's exactly what I expected it to be, except way more fun, you know? Tolerable on the highway, but not really built for it. Fun in the woods, but a little heavier than you'd like. Easy to ride, accessible, bulletproof, and I enjoy it. So I, this is a good bike that I would recommend if you, especially if you're coming from maybe street bikes, to off-road riding this would be a good bike to start with because it could do everything you wanted and you're not giving up any power um i think it's pretty easy to ride confidence inspiring i've said that before i just want to say thanks again to south pacific power sports and south pacific auto sales in albany for letting me borrow this it's kind of unprecedented like i've done test rides before but nobody's ever said sure take it put 100 miles on it take it wherever you want so that's a lot of faith and trust and foolishness if we want to continue to be able to do this including the suzuki 800 v-strom that many of you really want me to try out it would really go a long way if you uh, thought about popping over and popping in check it out i don't i just think people don't know it's there that's like did i know a lot of people don't know we have a suzuki motorcycle dealership in albany we do south pacific so you can buy this dr650 should be back there by the time you see this video <laughs> It'll be cleaned up. If you want to see that full DR650 review, please consider subscribing to the channel because I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I've come with a mute button. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. A thank you. Excellent!